Hello, and welcome to my Fire Emblem 9 Path of Radiance Hard Mode 100% Gross Low Turn Count Playthrough, brought to you by Typhoon Carter. Today we have Chapter 7. Chapter 7 is a, a route map, and it is the last map before we get access to a base function. And there's a couple things that we need to do in this route map. One of the things that we have to do is we have to get some treasure and there's a lot of enemies on this map and there will also be a, a recruitable unit that is going to join us soon. First you might see Boyd chipping away at this soldier and using a steel axe to weigh himself down. This is to set up a kill for Soren, as like I said, training Soren is a important priority for us. And Titania is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting on this map. Now you might wonder why Ike is like not really joining in. This is because our new unit who is going to join us, Mia, is going to like walk towards him. On this enemy phase, Titania is using her hand axe and we really put this to use and we conserve its uses up to this point specifically for this map as there are a couple units with 1 to 2 range that we have to deal with and Titania is going to play a big part in that. And Mia gets attacked here but Mia doesn't really have any real chance of death. Here, luckily, so her starting spot isn't too bad. And a little bit about Mia, who is totally the proud owner of the subreddit known as r slash Mia's armpits. Um, Mia is a Myrmidon, and her bases are marginally better than Ike's at base, but Mia herself is really not all that good because she is sword locked, and her damage output is even worse. On top of the fact that she starts with D swords, so she can't really make use of something like a killing edge. It should be noted that Mia comes with the skill vantage, which allows the user to attack first, no matter what, as long as they can retaliate. But on Mia, this doesn't really work too well because she can't really one round anybody, especially not without a forge on top of the fact that you would have to like make a forge to like reduce weight as well. Anyway, so Mia joins us and Mia won't really be doing anything here because she cannot kill anybody if her life depended on it. Now this right section, we're just gonna have Oscar take care of it and giving Oscar those levels really pays off here so that he can reach some uh, two hit KO benchmarks, especially with the short spear. And we have Boyd, Soren, and Ike who are all going to help like clean out this bottom section of the map and Riss is going to like have some insurance for us. Unfortunately on a map where we have to fight a lot of enemies here, Boyd's uh, skill Tempest really screws us over as we do need Boyd to hit and we'll fight lots of enemies. And Riss here we have relatively well shielded and he won't really be in that much danger. And Gatry and Shannon, this is their last map that they show up before they leave. Luckily they, their inventory gets transferred over to the convoy when they do leave. And Shannon actually could avoid uh, critting that archer, or rather it could be unnecessary because it could very well depend on their stat roll as it is possible for that archer to roll down on HP. Titania here gets a nice level and while we actually had this uh, hammer on her as she needs to use it a fair bit, Although it's not fully necessary, but it's going to be more important for turn 3, where she's going to have to fight even more armor knights. Now there's like 3 tre treasure chests here, but the only one that we really want and is going to be super relevant for us in particular is the treasure chest that contains 
uh, barrier, which is, or ward, depending on, like, what version you're used to. It's located where Gatri and Shannon are as we watch these long enemy phases go down. And Titania levels up her axe rank, but it doesn't really matter. And Gatri and Shannon will be more than capable of handling like just that top left section of the map on their own combined. And while Oscar misses the benchmark on killing uh, that soldier, it was really important for him to get rid of that archer. And luckily we have some turns to work with where Oscar does not necessarily need to one round KO. And Boyd here is able to deal uh, modest amounts of damage, but these armor knights have lots of defense, so it's very hard to break through them. And Titania is capable of one-rounding some of the armor knights with a steel axe, although some of them she cannot do so, which should be noted. Oscar, we had position there. So that the soldier that was guarding that treasure chest will be just in range to attack him. And this just allows us to get more done as we do need Oscar to work his way up to the top. Gatry here actually doubles these armor knights. Which is like very nice. Especially considering the fact that Gatry's base speed is normally not that good but he also did get a level up, and that level up he got in the defend map was actually unnecessary as he'd be able to 2 round KO them. And then here we witness massive disappointment from Mia, <laughs> although Mia will actually have her uses later on, despite it looking like they're extremely disappointing. And Soren here, thanks to the Armor Knights having no res, is able to finish them off. And Titania here one-shots this Thief with a hammer, although the hit was a little bit spotty. But we're gonna need her to move into the center of the map, as we need to work, or rather converge onto the boss of this map, who is a pre-promoted Sage, and they're at the top of this map. And Oscar is going to help us out as well, as there is a priest that he has to help us get rid of. And Ike here, despite having times 2 effectiveness against Armor Knights with his Regal Sword, uh, it's rather disappointing to watch him basically do no damage, but Void here can help us clean up, at least on enemy phase. And we get rid of that soldier, mostly so that we can shield Riss from taking too much uh, combat. And Mia here is going to work as a meat shield, so that uh, they can stay relatively... So at least Riss doesn't get killed. And he still is able to heal Soren, which is really nice. And here we're going to form a small choke point with Shannon and Gatry, with Shannon taking shots at the back. And Gatry basically shielding Shannon from like all the enemies. And Gatry here attacks that soldier specifically so that he can kill him on enemy phase. Now Ike here thankfully has more res than he normally would, otherwise he'd actually be in a lot of danger of dying. And Soren here normally, if it weren't for 100% uh, gross, he'd also have an extremely uh, good chance of dying in two hits, but is able to take not that much damage. And Gatry here is able to one-shot this Myrmidon. Quite frankly, there's just not too much else to talk about as we're getting close to the end of the map. And 
Also, Ike's level ups here have pretty much paid off, like all of the units training that we gave back in Chapter 5, and Ike here gets another level up. Titania's hammer comes in really handy here, as she is able to one round KO these armor knights and almost one shot them. Although I think it might be possible for her to one shot some of these armor knights, depending on stat rolls. That soldier that's like in front of the two chests on the left side, he is stationary, so we're gonna need a little bit of help from Shinon Gatry to like take care of them. Or rather, we'd have to move towards them, per se. As we watch these enemies just crumble before us. Now Shinan is not going to be back until like after Ike's promotion and Gatry won't really be back until around chapter 13, give or take. So it'll be some time and on turn 4, this is the last turn, this is just a little bit more micro optimization and thankfully, as I stated before, we don't have to trade away Shinan or Gatry's inventory before they leave as it will be sent to convoy automatically. And here we have Void finish off the mage. If that didn't happen then we have Ike or Mia. Unfortunately we had to discard something so we discarded his iron axe because like I said we're getting the base next chapter and there will be an armory available. And here we have Oscar basically take out this priest and he is able to stay off range of the boss which is also a really nice thing as that priest is stationary and also will not suicide himself so this is important so that Titania can just finish off the job and Titania has enough proof where she can basically one range uh, the boss if she really wants to and we're going to get her to do that because she doesn't quite have the benchmarks needed to kill this armor knight by other means since POHR enemies are extremely fat. And Gatry here is able to double this soldier although we would have also had enemy phase to pull it off as that soldier doesn't really move. And then we're just gonna get Shinon to um, grab one of the chests which just so happens to be the chest that gives us a, a ward staff. That ward staff will be nice for staff grinding down the line. And here Balmer the boss here just basically gets stomped by Titania who has more than enough hit to basically handle Balmer by herself. With that done that will be chapter 7 cleared in 4 turns and we unfortunately are going to have to witness Krail dying here as there's a short cinematic and I will see you guys next time for chapter 8. Bye bye.